I would be talking to you about uh, adenoviral keratoconjunctivitis diagnosis and management. And we all will uh, agree that this is a uh, this is this can become sometimes very tricky to treat. There are no uh, financial disclosures, and it is the most common cause of red eye in the world and constitutes about 15 to 70 percent of all conjunctivitis. Uh, basically, there are 60 serotypes present, which are divided into six groups, and it can occur as epidemic keratoconjunctivitis, pharyngoconjunctival fever, or or as non-specific follicular conjunctivitis. Now, generally, the age group is 20 to 40 years, and pharyngoconjunctival fever occurs most commonly in children and is highly contagious because of direct contact with ocular secretions. But spread can occur also uh, generally from the contact with eye care providers, instruments, tonometers, lit specula, slit lamps, etc. And nowadays, uh, any viral conjunctivitis has become uh, so important because of uh, the uh, COVID times. There are uh, seven species which are involved, and each of these uh, species is uh, linked to a particular kind of uh, uh, clinical manifestation. So serotype 8, 19, and 37 are responsible for EKC, and uh, uh, serotype 3, 5, 7, and 11 are responsible for the pharyngoconjunctival fever. Now, the incubation period is generally 4 to 24 days. Symptoms tend to last for 7 to 21 days, pretty much like the corona. Patient remains infectious for two to three weeks, predominantly unilateral, involves the fellow eye in almost 70% of the cases. And there may be recent history of eye exam, affected family member, or occupational exposure. It has a biophasic clinical course, so there can be initial infective phase and inflammatory phase, uh, which is seven to 10 days after the initial infection. The patients may complain of excessive watering, foreign body sensation, photophobia, and decreased visual acuity. And the signs are variable. They could be crusting and swelling of the eyelids with bulba conjunctival uh, injection, conjunctival chemosis, follicular or papillary reaction may be there with subconjunctival hemorrhages, and follicular reaction of the inferior tarsal conjunctiva may also be seen. Now, uh, it tends to have a self-limiting cause, but uh, sometimes it doesn't heal. And in uh, those cases, there can be complications such as particular and subconjunctival hemorrhages. Uh, pseudomembranes, which can form, true membranes can also form, subepithelial infiltrates, uh, similar front formation, and they can be superadded bacterial infection. Uh, we have to differentiate between the pseudomembranes and the membranes. So these are the pseudomembranes, which are classically sheets of fibrin-rich exudate, which do not have any blood or lymphatic vessels, and uh, they consist of conglomerate of WBC, macrophages, etc. And when you remove this, there will be no bleeding. So that is why they are pseudo in nature. True membranes, on the other hand, is when there's a coagulum which is present beneath the epithelium and there's uh, early angiogenesis. And uh, bleed, when you remove them, there'll be classically bleeding, uh, which will be there. And this may cause subepithelial fibrosis and similar front formation. Now, once the adenoviral keratoconjunctivitis, the acute phase is over, uh, it can then uh, go on to uh, the chronic phase where you have multifocal subepithelial infiltrates, which are seen in almost half of the cases, more frequently in serotype 8, and they're about 0.5 to 1 millimeter oval to round in superficial cornea. They may appear from fourth day onwards and may be there chronically for months or even up to years, and they are generally few or 10 to 15 number. And patients would complain of photophobia, glare, and decrease in the best corrected visual acuity. And they represent cellular immune reaction against viral antigens which are deposited on the corneal stroma under the uh, Bowman's membrane. Bacterial superinfection can occur. This is rarely seen and more seen in children. And this can lead to amblyopia and strabismus. And pathogens which commonly include are the gram-positive cocci, especially the strep pyogenes and the gram-negative rods. Now, best, uh, these cases are generally diagnosed clinically, although lab investigations have been indicated in case of atypical presentations. Uh, or when the strain responsible, when you want to, when there's an epidemic and you want to know what is the strain responsible for EKC. And this is generally seen in uh, the current months, that is around July to August. And uh, uh, when the disease is recurrent and when there is no response to conventional treatment. So, uh, although the tests are cumbersome, but more recently, the rapid adeno detector uh, test is the one which has uh, come into hope. Uh, which is a very quick test. The sensitivity is 88%, specificity is 91%. And uh, it, it picks up, uh, there are 53 serotypes it, it detects within just 10 minutes. Although also you can do PCR in these cases and viral cultures. 
and serology ELISA, which is positive in 85% of the cases, which is done more for research purposes than for, uh, than for diagnosis clinically. Then the differential diagnosis consists of HSV and HZV uh, conjunctivitis, chlamydial or bacterial conjunctivitis, allergic conjunctivitis, chemical conjunctivitis, then it can be also related to contact lenses and uh, uh, for body, uh, which may be there. Now, the first line of treatment for acute cases as shown, so the disease is self-limited and resolution generally occurs within three weeks. So for symptomatic cases, the conservative treatment that is given is cold packs, artificial lubricants eight to 10 times a day, topical antibiotics may be given just to prevent or treat a super added bacterial infection three to four times a day, and topical antihistamines and vasoconstrictors can reduce the discomfort. The topical steroids uh, have a role to play, although it is controversial in acute phase. They may have a transient alleviating effect and may give symptomatic uh, relief, but they are generally reserved for cases where when there are pseudomembranes, subepithelial infiltrates in the visual axis, and the visual axis is significantly uh, impaired and severely symptomatic cases in terms of photophobia, foreign body sensation. So you would give topical steroids in these cases where there are membranes, where the patient is severely photophobic and symptomatic, or where there are multiple subepithelial infiltrates because you don't want them to scar. Because if they scar, then they will cause a decrease in the best corrected visual acuity. Now, the problems are that early cases of HSV, fungal and acanthamoeba uh, keratitis may be confused with this and then you can be in a problem. And it also increases the adenovirus replication rate as well as viral shedding. Uh, and uh, there may be dependence on the steroids. So the subepithelial infiltrates will reappear again on tapering of the steroids. And long-term use can also cause a risk of cataract and glaucoma. Now, this is a, a trial which was done way back in uh, 2011, where they looked at 111 patients who were randomized either to receive dexamethasone 0.1% or hypomellose. And uh, this study concluded that it, it does uh, shorten the course of the uh, disease and there were no harmful effects which were seen in this cohort of uh, patients. And there's always a question as to which steroid to use. Lotopred, that means a low dose, uh, a low potent steroid or, or a steroid such as dexamethasone. Now, again, this study uh, compared these two entities, uh, Lotopred 0.5% and dexamethasone 0.1%. And in terms of, uh, in terms of the uh, uh, outcomes, there was no difference. And so they concluded that one should use the strongest steroid with these side effects for adenoviral keratoconjunctivitis treatment. And again, uh, povidine iodine is something which is uh, uh, which is something uh, which is uh, also come into vogue for uh, uh, adenoviral keratoconjunctivitis. And a combination is being studied: topical povidine iodine along with uh, 0.1 percent uh, dexamethasone. So that tropical steroids, they relieve the symptoms and the poverty and iodine kills the virus in the tears and decreases the risk of the disease spread. Now this was a RCT which was done, which compared 0.1% uh, dexamethasone and poverty and iodine versus placebo. And uh, again, they concluded that dexa povidone combination does shorten the duration of conjunctivitis, uh, but it reported uh, more stinging. And this was a prospective randomized control study of 78 eyes, which looked into three uh, groups. Uh, and again, uh, concluded that the fastest improvement in the signs and symptoms occurred when uh, povidine was combined with dexamethasone 0.1%. And when only lubricating agents were used, there was lowest uh, improvement in the signs and the symptoms. So combination treatment reduced the symptoms and expedited the recovery in the EKC patients. Now, again, uh, uh, the tropical poverty and iodine has also come into vogue because of the corona times and uh, it is virucidal. It does not increase the viral shedding. It kills 99% uh, of even bacteria, MRSA, Pseudomonas, Serratia, and Candida. Uh, and uh, in vitro uh, virucidal activity has also been shown against herpes simplex virus. Now, in cases which do not respond to these, tropical cyclosporin can be given. And uh, this is given in 1% and 2% uh, concentrations. Uh, 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 it is a calcineurin uh, pathway inhibitor and a steroid sparing agent and given in symptomatic patients which are not responding to steroids. Of course, uh, and when there are uh, steroid side effects in the form of raised intraocular pressure and cataract formation. Then topical cyclosporin again uh, reduces the formation of uh, the subepithelial infiltrates, foreign body sensation and visual improvement 
as uh, was seen in studies which have uh, looked into topical cyclosporin concentrations ranging from 0.5 to 2 percent and uh, Oculus et al also have found that topical cyclosporin 0.05 percent uh, that is restasis uh, is safe and effective alternative in patients which are not responsive to steroids then in those cases which are not responding to topical steroids, uh, you can even give top topical tacrolimus. Both the eye drop 0.03% and the ointment 0.02% have been tried and have given good results. Uh, recently, there were uh, publication in Indian Journal of Ophthalmology, which looked into the efficacy of the ointment and said that probably uh, it was better than the eye drops. Uh, people have even tried topical antivirals, but I don't think they actually have a role to play. Uh, Cidofovir 1% uh, has been tried 4 to 10, 10 times a day and although it did decrease corneal opacities but local toxicity was higher in the form of pseudomembrane development and lacrimal duct uh, stenosis. Then for the sub haze that occurs because of the sub epithelial infiltrates even PTK has been done with mitomycin C which is supposed to improve visual acuity, photophobia and contrast sensitivity. And of course, prevention is better than cure. So good hygiene practices are a must. Rigorous disinfection of hands and instruments should be done, especially in the eye clinics, uh, and minimize the contact with the infected tissue. And all instruments and surfaces have to be cleaned with 70% ethyl alcohol or 5% sodium hypochlorite solution, uh, and reduce the transmission through the gloves, the donometer heads, uh, single eye pa patient eye drop dispenser should also be used for the same. So to conclude, adenoviral conjunctivitis is a self-limiting disease that tends to resolve spontaneously within one to three weeks in most cases. Management is focused on symptomatic relief and topical steroids may be indicated if vision-threatening complications arise. Late scarring may be treated by PTK. And of course, prevention is important to control propagation of infection. Now, how to diagnose, treat, and refer the theme of uh, this uh, webinar? So uh, the acute phase generally tends to resolve and uh, so does the symptomatic, uh, so does the symptoms in the form of pain, foreign body sensation, photophobia, et cetera, by conservative treatment. The problem comes when there are subepithelial infiltrates present or pseudomembranes or uh, uh, membranes which are present. In all such cases, the first line of treatment would be lubricants. Whenever there are complications, topical steroids can be added. And if after withdrawal of the topical steroids, uh, the recurrence of the symptoms do occur, then topical cyclosporin can be added to it, followed by slow withdrawal of the topical steroids. And then if it doesn't work, then as the third line of treatment, topical tacrolimus can be added. Suffice it to say that if the cases are recurrent and not getting treated, then it is best to refer these cases to the cornea specialists who would be more experienced in uh, treating such cases. So thank you very much for your kind attention.